So I have all of my colors that I'm going to be using. This is all Karen Simply Soft yarn. I am using just a bunch of scrap yarn that I have. This is such a good scrap yarn or stash buster project to just get through yarn that you have little quantities of that you're not really sure what to do with. So I have a whole skein here. It's the Karen Simply Soft. This is what I'm going to be using for my straps. I also have a little bit of scrap here. So it's a weight four yarn and it calls for a five millimeter crochet hook, which is what I'm going to be using. But you could really use any weight four yarn that you want, as many colors or as few colors as you would like. It's super customizable. So I am going to be using these five colors. So to get started with my first square, I am just choosing the first color I'm gonna work with, which is this yellow color. I've had these balls of yarn sitting in my scrap pile for quite a while, so I don't actually remember the names of these colors, but I'll find them and I'll stick them in the description box if you would like to get the same ones. So I'm going to start off by making a chain five you could also make a magic ring or a magic circle if you prefer. Either is totally fine. But for the sake of simplicity, I am just going to do a chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to slip stitch into that first chain. Now that I have slip stitched, we've got that little tiny circle in the middle there. So I'm going to chain three, and that's going to be our first double crochet of this first round. Now I'm going to yarn over and double crochet into the center of that circle. Yarn over again, double crochet into the center of that circle. So now I've got my first cluster of three double crochets, again with that first chain three, counting is our first double crochet. Now I'm going to chain one and place three more double crochets into the center of our circle. So one, two, and three. So we've got two clusters, chain one, and three more double crochets into the center. Chain one, and three more double crochets. This will be our last cluster. chain one. So you should have four clusters of three double crochets. So now we're going to find the top of that initial chain three and we are going to slip stitch into the top. So I just slip stitched those two clusters together. So this is how mine looks so far. Now I'm going to chain three That first chain three is always going to count as the first double crochet of each round. So now I'm going to yarn over and place a double crochet in the next two spaces. So now I'm at that chain one space. This is going to be our corner space. So I'm going to yarn over, go directly into that space and place two double crochets. Chain one and place two more double crochets in that same chain one space. Now in these next three stitches, I'm going to place a double crochet in each stitch. You might have to pull your corner stitches over a little bit to show that first stitch. So I'm going to yarn over and place 
one double crochet in each stitch. So I just placed three double crochets and I am at a chain one space again. So I'm going to directly into that space, place two double crochets. Chain one, two double crochets. Now again, in the next three stitches, place one double crochet in each stitch. So we just came to this chain one corner space. So in this space, we are going to place two double crochets, chain one, and then two double crochets all in that same space. Now in the next three spaces, we are going to place one double crochet in each stitch. I just came to that last corner space, so I am going to place my corner stitches, two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. So I just completed that corner. Now we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three. I just slip stitched. Now I'm going to chain three, yarn over, and I'm going to place a double crochet into each stitch until we get to our corner space. I just made it to our corner space, so I'm going to, in that space, place two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets all in the same space. All right, I just made the first corner of this round. Again, you are probably gonna have to pull over the corner stitches to show that first stitch that we're working into. So I'm gonna yarn over and place one double crochet into each stitch. And this is the pattern that we are going to continue with all the way around. So we're going to be placing a double crochet in each stitch and two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets in each corner space. And then I will meet you back here when we get to this last corner. So I just got to that last corner space of this round. All right, so I just did my two double crochets, chain two double crochets. So now I've got one, two stitches before that chain three. So I'm going to work my double crochets in there. All right, so I made it back to the chain three. This is how my square is looking so far. So now I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the chain three. So that was our third round. We are now going to do our fourth and final round. So I'm chaining three. And now I am going to work a double crochet into each stitch. So I am going to work this round exactly like I did the last one. So a double crochet in each stitch. And then in the corner spaces, two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets in the same space. So I am going to keep going around and finish out round four, and then I'll meet you back here. I am coming up on the last corner of this fourth round. So I'm placing my corner stitches. Okay, so I just finished that corner. Now I have one, two, three, four stitches to go into before that initial chain three. So I am placing my double crochets. So we are going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three. Chain one, 
All right, and now we are finished with our square, so we are gonna tie off. I'm leaving a little bit of a tail, just long enough to be woven in at the end. And there we have it, that's our first square. So we are going to need to make 13 of these. So I'm going to make 13 squares alternating between my five colors. I have a couple made so far. So when I am finished with square number 13, I will come back and meet you here and show you how we connect all of our squares to start the construction of our bag. So I just finished my 13 granny squares. So I have all 13 here. So now we're going to lay them out and start joining them to create our bag. So once you have all of your granny squares made, this is how we're going to lay them out to start assembling them. So we are going to start joining them like this. We will essentially just have one big panel of granny squares. Once these are all joined, we're going to fold them and then that will create the shape of our bag. So you have a couple of different options when it comes to joining these squares. You could use a flat slip stitch, a mattress stitch, whip stitch. You could single crochet them together. It's really just whatever you're most comfortable with, you can use that method. I'm going to flat slip stitch mine together, so I will show you how to get started on that. You can start wherever you feel most comfortable. I like to just start with doing the longer lines across the bag first, and then going the other way. So I'm going to start with these two granny squares. We're going to start by putting a slip knot on our hook. Once we've got our slip knot on our hook, we are going to find the chain one space in the corner of the square on your right side and insert in that back loop only. So we've got the front loop and back loop. We're going back loop only. Now move that working yarn to be in between your two squares. Now go to the square on your left side, insert the hook into the back loop only of that chain one space in the corner. So now you've got the three loops on your hook. You're going to pull that working yarn through all three. So now we are going to keep going, keeping this working yarn in the middle between these two squares that we're joining. So I'm going in back loop only on the right hand square, back loop only on the left hand square, keeping the working yarn in the middle the whole time, and then pulling the working yarn through. So that's how I'm going to join my squares, back loop only, go over to the other side, back loop only, and then pull through. Back loop on the right, back loop on the left, pull through. So this is how mine's looking so far. So I'm going to use this method to join all of my squares together. So I just finished joining these two squares. So this is how mine looks. I'm going to keep going and joining all of my squares with this method, assembling them in the shape that I showed you in the last clip. So I just finished joining these two squares and I'm continuing this way. I just wanted to give you a better look of what it looks like to go from the end of two squares onto the beginning of another two squares while you're joining. So I'm not going to tie off between these, I'm just going to keep going with the same method that I was using to join them. So I am going to go into the chain one corner space on the right side square. Go into the chain one corner space on the left side square, and again, only doing back loops only. So now I've got those three loops on my hook, and I'm just going to pull through all three loops. And then I'm going to continue on the same way that I joined the last two squares. So back loop, back loop, and pull through. So 
So now you can see that we've got one continuous line just going up these squares. So once I finish all of my lines going this way, I'm going to go back over them this way. Once I have all of my squares joined, I'll meet you back here. So I just finished joining these all together. This is how mine looks so far. This is the general shape that yours should be. So now we are going to connect them up the sides. So to do that, we are going to fold. So you should have these little side flaps and we're gonna fold them in this way and create this shape of our bag. So I start from the bottom and flat slip stitch up all the way. And then I like to stop right here. So I'm going to flat slip stitch these seams closed and then I'll meet you back here. This is how mine looks now that it's all joined. So now that we've got all of our squares joined together, we're going to start on our border and our straps. So I would recommend starting on whichever side you think might be the back of the bag or the side that you'll probably wear to the back the most often. The part where we join on really won't be super noticeable, but I still like to join in the back anyways. I am going to go into one of the first stitches on the right square. So it's not super important which one you go into. I just like going into one of these bottom stitches. So I'll go in there under both of the loops. So I'm making a slip knot and putting that on my hook. And now I'm going to pull that through, chain one to attach. And now I'm going to place one single crochet in that same space. So now we're attached. So now I'm just going to put one single crochet in each space up the side of this square. So I'm also weaving in these ends as I go. So there's a gray end here. So I'm just holding that against the back side of my work as I go to cover that up. So I'm coming to that last stitch before that chain one. So I'm just going to go directly into the chain one space, pull up a loop and single crochet. So I just put my single crochet in that chain one space. So now we are going to move on to making the actual strap of our bag. So we're going to chain the length that we want our strap to be. So I'm going to chain 80 for this because since it's a shoulder bag, I don't want it to be super long, but you could really chain whatever amount you would like. You can make it as long or as short as you want to. The actual number that you chain doesn't really matter. I would just make sure to keep track of it so that you can make sure that your straps are going to be the exact same length on both sides. So I am just going to start chaining until I get to 80. I just finished my chain of 80. So this is how long our strap is going to be. So if you're using an acrylic yarn, I would keep in mind that the strap will stretch at least a little bit, which I do take into consideration when choosing a length. So I am just going to kind of hold it like this and try it on my shoulder and just make sure that it fits me comfortably. All right, so I double checked it. I know that I'm happy with the length. So I am going to make sure that my chain is straight and not twisted. Reinsert my hook. And I am going to go into that chain one space and place a single crochet. And we are now attached. So there is the start of my strap. So now I am going to go down the side of this square, placing single crochets in every space. So I am going to continue around the top of my bag, placing single crochets in each stitch until I come to the point 
on the other side where we will make the other strap. So I'm just going to keep going, placing a single crochet in each stitch, and then I'll meet you back when I get right here. So I just got all the way around, and I am now at the chain one space of the other side. So I'm going to go in through that space, single crochet, and now I'm going to chain 80 and repeat the exact same process that I did on the other side. I'm going to chain 80, use a single crochet to attach it in the chain one space over here, and then once we get there, I will meet you back. I just chained my 80 and attached it with a single crochet in that chain one space. So now my straps should match on both sides. Now that I have attached my strap, I am going to go ahead and go back down the side of my square and place a single crochet in each space. And as I come to little ends like this, I'm just going to weave them in as I go and crochet over them. So I'm going to keep going with my single crochets until I get back to our first single crochet over here and then I will meet you back there. So I have one space before where we started. So I am going to place that last single crochet. And now I'm going to slip stitch into that first space. Chain one and single crochet into that space. That same space that we just slip stitched into. So this is how that should look. I'm going to stick a stitch marker into that first space just to be safe. You should be able to just tell which one it is because it is a little bit more risen than the other ones, but just so I don't get lost, I'm going to put a stitch marker in. So now I am going to start on making my border and my strap thicker. So I am going to single crochet into each space and I'm going to go all the way up to the strap Okay, so I'm getting close to the strap. I'm going to put a single crochet in that last space before the strap starts. And now we are going to start adding some width to the strap. So I am going to just go into the chain and do single crochets all the way up the chain. So I've gotten a couple of stitches up and this is how mine is looking so far. So I'm going to keep going all the way around and I will check in when I get back to the other side of the chain over here. I just made it almost all the way around. This is how mine is looking so far. So I only have a couple more stitches before I get to the end. So I'm going to place my single crochets. Now that I've gotten to the end and placed a single crochet in every space, I am going to go into that next stitch and keep moving with my single crochets all the way around. So in every stitch, I am going to place one single crochet. So I'm going to keep going all the way around. When I get to my strap on the other side, I'm going to do the exact same thing and place a single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And then I will meet you when I get back to this very first single crochet that we placed. I made it all the way around. This is how my straps are looking so far. I am happy with how thick it is on the outside here, so I'm gonna tie off now. So I'm taking my stitch marker out and I am just going to slip stitch into that first single crochet and tie off. All right, so there are my straps. So this is how my border looks now. I am all tied off. So now we're going to start on the border on the inside. So this is gonna add a border 
to these inside squares and is also going to add a little bit more to the inside of our straps to make them a little bit thicker. So to start that, I am gonna insert into, you can really insert into any stitch on the side. I just prefer to insert a little bit closer to the bottom. So I am going to make a slip knot, stick that on my hook, pull it through, chain one, and then make a single crochet in that same space. So now I am just going to put a single crochet in every stitch. And again, I am just crocheting over any ends that are still loose. This is just going to save us some time at the end, leaving us with less ends to weave in when we're finished. So I just got all the way up the side and I am now at my strap. So I'm just going to keep going around with single crochets until I reach the point where we started and then I will meet you back there. I got all the way around. This is how my strap is looking now. So I put my last single crochet into that last stitch. Now I am going to slip stitch into that first single crochet. So I'm happy with the way that this looks. If you would like the thickness of your outside border to be exactly the same as your inside border, you could chain one, single crochet into the same space, and then go along and do one more row of single crochets all the way around. But I am happy with the way that it looks now. I want the inside border to be a little bit thinner than the outside. So I'm gonna leave it right here. So I'm going to tie off. And that is how mine looks. So I'm going to repeat those same steps on the other side to add my inner border. And then I'll meet you back here to weave in the ends and then we're finished. I've finished both sides of my straps. So that is how it is looking so far. So our bag is now completely assembled. We have our straps done. So the last thing that we have to do is to weave in our ends. So to weave in my ends, I have a darning needle. You can use any kind of darning needle, but I really like these finishing needles. So I am going to insert one of my ends into the needle. And I am just going to start weaving in these ends. So I am going to weave in a few different directions, up, down, side to side, just to secure it as much as I can. All right, so I have woven in a good portion of that end so now I'm going to cut off the remaining portion. So now it is a smoother edge. So I'm going to just go around and repeat that process on all of my loose ends. And we are finished. Enjoy your new bag and thank you for watching.